Hello students, let us start the fifth chapter of our geography in class 10, Minerals and Energy Resources. As you know that in this chapter we are particularly doing the topic resources. First chapter resources where we learn that there are three types of resources, natural resources, human being itself resources and human made resources. So in the first chapter with the natural resources example of natural resources like soil and land. So in second chapter also it was an example of natural resources that is forest and wildlife and the next chapter water is an example of natural resources the fourth chapter agriculture is also an example of natural resources now here we divide this chapter into two parts minerals is an example of natural resources and from here we come to the next type of natural resource that is the human made resources and energy resources is an example of human resources first of all we will do minerals minerals are actually a naturally occurring substances which have a definite table chemical composition on it these uh, the rocks are combinations of the homogeneous substances and they are called minerals and it actually depends upon the physical and chemical com conditions under which the minerals are formed in these rocks the geologist definition of a minerals we have to know and this definition is This is the definition of minerals means a homogeneous naturally occurring substances with a defini definable internal structure and chemical composition and this is what we have to write in the exam if the questions come the write down the definition of minerals. So this is how these definitions tell us that the naturally occurring substances which are found in the rocks they have a definite chemical composition in it and we give them name according to that. Classification of minerals. If we classify minerals, then we can classify minerals into three parts according to our book of NCRT 10th class. Here we divide it into metallic. The second one is the non metallic, and the third is the energy minerals. These energy minerals are also a non metallic minerals, but here we classify it into a different part because this helps us for producing energy. Metallic minerals again divided into three parts. First is the ferrous. Ferrous are those uh, ferrous minerals. I will clear the Definitions of each and everything, but first let's, let us write down the whole parts non ferrous, and this third part is the precious. Basically, they are of two types ferrous and non ferrous. Now, what is a metallic minerals? Metallic minerals, and what are the non metallic minerals? Let us first clear this thing metallic and non metallic here. Metallic, and the second one is the non metallic minerals. These minerals are those minerals which are consist of metals. Means they are consist of metals and they are solid in nature. They are hard, shining and ductile. The examples are like iron, copper, manganese, aluminium, etc. They all are the example of metallic minerals. Now, on other hand, the non-metallic minerals are those minerals. It does not consist any matter, and uh, they are. It is not sure that they 
आर सॉलिड और लिक्विड इट कैन बी सेमी सॉलिड लिक्विड और इवन इन दी गैसेस फॉर्म द एग्जांपल्स आर लाइक कोल पेट्रोलियम नेचुरल गैस एटसेट्रा दे ऑल आर द एग्जांपल ऑफ नॉन मेटेलिक मिनरल्स as you can see here that again i divide metallic minerals into two parts the ferrous and the non ferrous basically and the third also precious ferrous means those minerals first is consist of iron second thing they are malleable and ductile and have iron content of in it which is very important that they have iron content in it uh, examples are like iron ore manganese and coromite on other hand let us take the what is the non ferrous obviously ferrous is the iron non ferrous means does not consist of iron in it and just opposite of it they are non malleable and non ductile examples are like copper zinc salt bauxite etc they all are the example of non ferrous metallic minerals and the precious minerals here the book divided into a third part the examples are like gold silver platinum etc they all comes in the precious metallic minerals non metallic minerals i think it is clear we clear it in the definition in these two point that what are the non metallic minerals the examples of non metallic minerals are like mica salt potash sulfur granite limestone marble sandstone etc are the example of non metallic minerals so this is how we classified the minerals on the basis of metallic and non metallic and in our book the third part is also given which is the energy minerals here energy minerals are those minerals which gives us energy we classified it into three parts solid liquid and gas the solid one is coal liquid petroleum and the gases is natural gas they are the example of energy minerals they are non metallic minerals they are classified into energy minerals because they gives us energy and we produce energy from these all three minerals this is how we clear the classification of minerals we will do minerals in our second part of this chapter in the last we will do just that in our country india fairly rich in minerals not only in fairly rich in minerals and we have a variety of minerals in our country but before that let us do the importance of minerals if we see the importance of minerals in for a country then they are indispensable part of our life almost everything which we used in our daily life uh, they were made up of minerals like the car buses that means transportation like car buses train aeroplanes manufactured from minerals and run on the power resources also derived from the earth that is the coal petroleum natural gas etc even the food that we eat contains minerals in the all stages of development human beings have used minerals for their livelihood decoration festivals religious and ceremonial rites etc and etc so this is how we see that minerals are a very important part of our life we are using these minerals not now but still thousands of years we are using minerals and the country which is rich in minerals is depend on itself and luckily our country india is rich in minerals in our country india basically minerals are found in the main main areas those are peninsula rocks as we know that rocks contains most minerals so here the peninsula rocks 
contain most of the reserves of the coal, metallic minerals, mica and many other non-metallic minerals we found in the peninsula India. These sedimentary rocks which are found on the western and eastern flanks of the peninsula India means in these parts here and on the other hand in this part. So El Tranapu area also covered this. Especially in Gujarat and Assam have the most of the petroleum deposits are found in these sedimentary rocks. Rajasthan, which is a fossil of Tatil Sea. With the rock system of the peninsula has reserve of many non-ferrous minerals are found here and still uh, recently we get a lot of reserves of the petroleum and natural gas also in Rajasthan. Minerals are also found in the glacier deposits and India has a vast alluvial plains on the northern North India and they are almost devoid of economic minerals. These various variations of exist largely in India because of the difference in the geological structures which is found in India, the process and the time. This all involved in the formation of these all minerals. So this is how we see that minerals are found basically in all parts of India. Not only there, but also near the coastal part. Also, like here, Bombay High, we uh, found minerals. Now, what are the mode of occurrence of minerals? And that we will do in our next part. And then we will do one by one each type of minerals with their example, like the metallic minerals, various, two examples of various, then two examples of non ferrous. We will take the non metallic minerals examples of non-metallic minerals and then we come to the energy minerals also. And that's all in this part of the chapter. Any kind of problem and doubt you face, you can send your comment to me. I will definitely reply you. Or you can visit my blog which is www.blogspot.in Thank you student.